friends celebrating the connection with our pets. This is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. We love our pets here, all of our animals very much. And in a, in a uh, push-comes-to-shove kind of situation, we might select our pets over a human. And apparently, that is not unusual behavior. On today's show, we'll have Dr. John Huber on. He's a clinical forensic psychologist, and I have no idea what that exactly is, but we'll find out. He called several major studies that showed that mankind has more empathy for pooches in dire circumstances than suffering people. <laughs> I'm not surprised. No, I'm not either, but uh, he has the, the facts to back that up, and he'll be on with us right here on Animal Radio. Hi, Don. What's up? I have a question okay. for the vet. She's right here. I have, a, I have a cat. Well, actually, I have two cats. I have an older cat uh, that's about 14 years old, and I have a cat that's about a year, almost a year and a half old. And this cat was a throwaway. Um, she came to me at about four weeks old, a little too early. Um, and she was also the runt of the litter. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but she refuses to have her claws clipped without what I would consider abuse <laughs> to the animal. And, okay. I mean, I, I literally have to, like, grab her and put her between my legs and squeeze her little paws, and I don't <laughs> want to do it. it. It hurts me more than it hurts her. Okay. All right. So it's not going well, and I'm assuming you're wanting to find out the way to do this, the trick, yes. right? The, the trick. <laughs> okay. The, the, the easy way is she doesn't howl like the devil. Okay. The first thing that I'm going to say is that she's a cat, not a dog. So we have to approach cats a bit differently when we want to train them to accept some something that they might find unpleasant. So you really need to do small little bits. Try not to try to overpower her physically because that never goes over well with cats. In the veterinary world, it always ends up in a no world situation. <laughs> so you come at it and you, in the cat's eyes, go slowly. And I would say some soft restraint is helpful. And that just was my, kind that of was my last resort. I mean, I I tried um, from from a very young kitten. I tried of just approaching her, you know, when she was sleeping and doing a little bit, and and she would just rip, pull her hands away without any, okay. you know, with the slightest uh, nippers near her. <laughs> okay, she saw, and, she and saw that's what. Coming. That's where we need to focus our attention. Before you even pull those clippers out, we need to use paw therapy. So basically, that is what your job is. You may need to take her to the veterinarian to get the nails trimmed or to the groomer. Um, but at this time, your job is to make her like you touching her feet. And that should be the only thing you try to do. So trimming her nails is not going to be on the close horizon then. That's going to mean getting some of her favorite treats. That's going to mean getting what she likes. Does she like to be brushed? Does she like chin rubs? Those are the things you want to do do at the time that you touch her feet or even approach them. Do not go further than that step until she finds that somewhat okay. If you try to push it and start restraining her and holding those feet and squeezing the nail, she's not going to go for it. Eventually, we hope to get to that point and make that more, more pleasant for her. When you do get to that point, my number one tips for actually trimming the nails in cats are that a lot of people don't hold the nail still enough. So you need to hold your thumb and forefinger on the actual base of the nail, squeeze so that claw comes out, and you cut quickly and sharply with a nice, sharp set of toenail trimmers. Your preference. I usually like the little scissor handle versus the guillotine ones. I would not advise using the vibrating trimmers for this kitty because it does not sound like that would be anything she'd even entertain. And some people will even use just large human toenail nippers if the kitties have real small or um, narrow nails. That might even be an option. But that may be weeks or months down the road for you. So remember, don't push it. And you really want to make this a pleasant experience. Reward her with those little baby steps along the way. So best to wish with you there, Dawn. I know it's a hard thing. Cats are not dogs. So let's not treat them like one. one 405 right now. We had the same problem here at Animal Radio, and we decided just to do one paw or one nail at a time. And that uh, that was enough to, to keep our cats from getting overwhelmed. But it can be done. It can be done slowly. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Oh, just fine. Where are you calling I from? Up. I, yeah. I live in Boneville, Georgia. Boneville? Is that really the name? Boneville? Yeah, yeah, I found out a, a, a couple weeks ago our hotel burnt down there. It hasn't been inhabited since the 1930s. Holy moly. found out it was, they built it in 1845. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, yeah. 
some guy named Bones came there in 19, 1840 and built a mill below the. He built a dam and made a mill pond and made a mill, and it became a booming place. <laughs> That's the name Boneville. Yeah, his his name was John Bones, B O N E S, and that went to about five years ago. We had a post office. Oh, well, I'm going to dedicate today's show to Boneville, if that's okay with everybody Dim in the city. Dim bones. Okay, Dim Bones, Dim Bones. <laughs> Dr. Debbie, I, I believe this call might be for you from Boneville. Okay, so what do you got going on? I got these really handsome chihuahuas. I got a male. He he's, looks just like the Beverly Hills uh, male in that mm-hmm. movie. He's handsome. He's got all the markings, and he's pedigree. And I got a female I brought in, a puppy, and she's grown now, and... I can't get them to the mate. Uh, well, she gets very violent. She has mm-hmm. mood swings like I've never seen. Otherwise, she's You've a, never seen a bitch in heat before? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 you know what? She gets Her mood swings are so bad. I actually rewrote a Disney song about her. Oh, really? Oh, really? Can, oh yeah. Can we hear in it? In fact, I just added to it. Well, don't you want to know what I want to do to the dog to make her mate? <laughs> First, or well, either one, I can do both of them. Yeah, well, either 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 way, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm game. Okay, uh, what do you want to know? You want to know what I, what my plan is to to make this happen? Yeah, so tell hear me what, song first? tell me what your your plan or what you think the solution to this problem is. Okay, he he's been uh, humping on stuff like toys and all that, and just not ejaculating, not you know actually getting an erection, but he humps on this stuff, and he has mm-hmm. this one pillow that's. He humps on all the time. We call it his woman. And I was thinking about ripping it open and wrapping it around her and take some baby uh, diaper pins and wrap it around her. Maybe that might do two things. It might make him more attractive to her, and it might keep her from turning around and trying to bite him. Well, you know that it, it isn't a foreign concept, and they actually do this with um, collection of semen for large animals, large breed animals. They do have kind of like a, a fake uh, um, horse that they will um, collect from, and then the, the animal will oh. mount that. So <laughs> that's, that's a possibility. <laughs> um, so the concept is there. Now, now, the thing that I will tell you is that there are situations, especially when dogs are, they grow up in the same household, that the female male may never accept and she will never stand for a breeding even if she's oh. going through estrus and even if she is certainly horny as craziness um, part of that is because of doggy dominance and there are some females that just do not accept the um, I guess the, the stature that the male in that household is um, worthy of mating with her um, she may be more dominant aggressive um, there may be other things going on with that fella that may not allow him to do the deed so there could be a lot going on here that um, that, that we may not really quite understand. So I generally, yeah. if we have two dogs in the same household that uh, things aren't going well, I don't get my hopes up too much because in many cases for established breeders, they will actually take the female to the male's household and allow the female to breed in that situation. It kind of, you know, it's kind of like uh, on his own turf, you know, you're less nervous, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can't do that because your dogs are in the same household. And I, maybe we can send them to Kimpton Hotels for a nice little yeah, getaway or something like that. Idea. We can consider. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea, yes. I, I may have to do that because, you know, I want, I want a son named Bam Bam. His name is Bambi, and her name is Feline, like the two deer from Disney. Yeah. And yeah. I, I want I want, I want, to, I want to, I want him to, to move on. I want I want another generation. Sure. Well, you know, Jeff, I got to tell you, I, I I understand the motivation to want to have one of his own, but here in uh, Las Vegas, 50, almost well, not quite fifty percent, but half of the shelter is is truly made up of a predominance of chihuahuas and pit bulls, oh, yeah. and we have no and, shortage know, of chihuahuas in this yeah. world so as much as he may be beautiful you can go to just about any shelter and find a yeah. beautiful young male and save a life and, and i would really advocate that you consider that yeah I, i've seen a lot of them but they're all neutered and and, and spayed but then again you know we're probably gonna end up getting him neutered before too long because this is gonna be too wild yeah. I mean, he gets he whimpers and whines and she growls and she you know, i mean i mean literally i mean i wrote a song Hello? about her so he- are you still there? Yeah, can I hear the song? I'd like to hear the song. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay here it goes. Here it goes. Corella Feline, she can be mean. Corella 
Ephelene, she's tiny and lean. She's got teeth and she knows how to use them. Watch your fingers, you might lose them. <laughs> Corella Feline, you never seen a sneaky, conniving, biting machine. <laughs> she warns you when it's time to go out. She's growling at you from underneath the couch. <laughs> I, I ended it there with Corella, Corella Feline. I have more verses to go, but that's what I got so far. Wow, that's wow. wow. That's, that Isn't was, that good? Isn't that good? That's good. I'm awesome. a truck driver. I got a lot of time, so you know I can make up stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, you're you're very talented. You're you're extremely uh, talented. I might say. I might say America's Got Talent worthy. Talent. Maybe he's yeah. starting a new segment on Animal Radio. You know, maybe we need to have a, you know, a Tal- musical yes. component. I like this. That's you a good take idea. Rock and roll songs, Disney songs, and. And add them to your dog's uh, personality. You know. <laughs> well, I, 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 maybe I, I just say, if uh, it doesn't happen this time, I'm going to just get him fixed and probably go hunt another one down. Because those, those dogs are something. You, it's hard to break away from a chihuahua once you ever had one. Yeah, once yeah. you go to chihuahua, it's hard to go back to anything else, really. Uh, oh, Jeff, so smart. thank you so much yeah. for your call today. You you know what? You've cheered me up. <laughs> I hope my song did y'all well. I'm going to write another verse or two to so it, make it better, but that's not bad for on the steering wheel. Yeah, if you write any more, let me know. Give us a call. Let oh, us know okay. about it. All right. We appreciate it. There you go. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Hi, this is Bob Barker on Animal Radio, reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. All dogs should eat a pH-balanced alkaline diet. An alkaline diet reduces health risks and can also reduce scratching, shedding, and hot spots. So does this mean you need to check your dog's pH balance? No, because canine caviar has created the first and only alkaline dog food that is pH-balanced. It also has the highest metabolized calories. What does this mean? Your dog needs to eat less. Get a healthier dog and save money with Canine Caviar products. Find them at your local pet supply store or online at caninecaviar.com. Hi, this is Maya Bialik on Animal Radio. Please adopt a pet. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. It's Animal Radio, celebrating the connection with our pets. And in just a few minutes, we're going to talk to a clinical forensic psychologist. And I really, to to be honest, I don't know exactly what that is. We'll find out what that is. But this guy has done a little bit of research, and he he found out that we maybe love our animals more than we love humans around us. And that, you know, if there was a fire, a house fire, we might actually go in and save the animal instead of the humans inside. And he says... I I agree. What's your point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Where are you going with this? Yeah, yeah. So we need we need an expert to tell us this. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case you didn't know that, that's on the way. <laughs> Joey, what are you working on today? Well, how about you know your your pet's face and what they get into and the bacteria that they get on their their coat, um, or if it's a cat, their fur. You know, did we ever think about that? And what can we do grooming wise to reduce? To reduce the possibilities of, you know, transmitting any type of disease. Yeah. And as you say that, right now, Ladybug, the studio stunt dog, is licking Judy all over her face. And you love that. You just... (laughs) She loves me. (laughs) So we'll find out more about that and how to... Uh, what, what are you going to do? Just kind of give us preventative tips from transferring diseases or sicknesses or what? Yeah, preventative. Things that can make it, you know, then they can reduce the risk. Okay, that's on the way. Just a few minutes with Joey Villani, the dog father. Lori from the newsroom, the packed newsroom. It looks especially packed today with all kinds of fur. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. They love it. They do. They- I, it's, I have a hard time keeping them out. I'd have to close the door. And it's not that I have a hard time telling them no. But um, that would just be like, you know, closing the door just to keep them out, really. And that would be the only purpose. And that's not good enough. Would it be safe to say that you have separation anxiety? Not the dogs, but you have separation anxiety. You you freak out when you're not around them? I think that's probably a bingo. (laughs) (laughs) There's um, so many places that I, I think I would feel better with my dogs. I really hate going anywhere without them. I don't leave the house a lot because of it. 
Well, it's so fun to have them here. And it, we work at a place where our pets can be with us. Hopefully you do too. And if you don't, maybe you should quit your job and find a place where you can bring your pet to work. Yeah. This is a suggestion from us folks here at Animal Radio. If they're small enough, just stick them in your purse and nobody will know. Yeah, nobody. I saw somebody had a drawer in their desk and they actually pulled open their drawer and their dog was in the bottom drawer of their desk with a blanket and they just <gasps> closed the drawer back up and the dog just stayed there. That's a little weird. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> So what do you have coming up in the news, Lori? Well, you know, Joy was talking about cat diseases and stuff or, you know, pet diseases. There is a cat disease now that was non-existent in one place for the last 45 years or so. And now, because of a lack of vaccinations, this is re-emerging in this country. So we'll tell you what it is and how to keep your cat Ooh. safe. Okay, that's coming up in about 10 minutes right here on Animal Radio. Let's go to the phones for your calls, 1-866-405-8405. Hey, Rob, how are you doing? Okay, how are you today? Where are you? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Are you uh, where in Pennsylvania? Um, uh, near uh, Wilkesbury, Scranton, um, east or west of there out in the hills. How can we help you? I have Dr. Debbie right here. Well, well howdy. Hi, uh, howdy, how are you? Very uh, good. I I got um, a thing from our vet. It's just a, a booklet that came out. I was reading through it, and it says it was talking about how roundworms and hookworms, I believe it were, can be transmitted when uh, animals eat other critters. You got and it. And I was, uh, how likely is that? And can warming is there warming that can be done uh, preventively? For that, or because we have a, a couple of cats, and uh, they hunt the bunnies and the squirrels and chipmunks, and the dogs sometimes steal from them and eat them. And so I, I didn't know, uh, you know, if they, if they should be wormed like twice a year, just in case, or. Yeah, yeah, very good questions, and and I'm glad to hear somebody actually reads those handouts that we veterinarians give you guys. <laughs> so it's it's very good, but yes, very good questions. So things like roundworms, hookworms, yes, um, we can have a hunter, say a cat that hunts, eats, you know, rodents, birds, rabbits. Uh, well, I guess a cat would need a rabbit, but that's oh, my yeah. dog actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, they can actually acquire some of these parasites, not just from the regular. St- uh, soil or eating stool, but from actually eating other creatures. And um, how common is it? Mm, probably not the most common way that pets get infected, but it is possible. Um, so yes, we would, uh, in your area, you might, uh, you know, every area in the country has different parasite burdens and loads, but I'd say from where you're sounding like where you're from on the East Coast, I would be thinking twice a year um, deworming would be a very rational protocol where we'd um, basically deworm as much as we need for the area we're in. Now, I'm from Las Vegas. We don't have as many of these type of critters. So once a year out here would seem um, appropriate for that. And for dogs, the best way to do regular deworming is to actually use a monthly heartworm preventative that also has a deworming for intestinal parasites. So that can be one of the great ways for dogs to ensure that we keep this parasite burden very low and help to protect against those kind of um, acquiring of the um, parasites along the road. Okay. And, and, and how about ticks? Uh, is it only the deer tick that carries Lyme disease or is it the bigger ones too, the wood ticks? There are other varieties, and, um, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, there's lots of different species out there. Any tick in my eyes is suspect, not just because of Lyme disease, but because of the other diseases they carry, or lichiosis, anaplasma. So there's other diseases that those little critters can carry. So in my eyes, no tick is a good tick. <laughs> okay. All righty. Thanks. Well, I, I thank you for your time. 1-866-405-8405 to talk to any one of the Dream Team right now. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Hi, this is Jesse Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family. I'm on Animal Radio. Adopt a pet. Admit it. You love your dog, and he is part of the family. So when choosing your next vacation, don't forget Fido. With just a little planning, the entire family can enjoy a road trip. To find the best vacation spot for Spot, subscribe to Fido Friendly, the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog, where each issue includes hotel and destination reviews, where both you and Fido are welcome. Go online to FidoFriendly.com and 
Find out what all the barking's about. This is an Animal Radio News Update. I'm Lori Brooks. Researchers from the University of Veterinary Medicine in Vienna, Austria, have found that older dogs benefit from playing computer games that use a touch screen because it might help the dog to stave off cognitive decline, especially among older dogs. The scientists found that brain training and problem solving, like in humans, can slow the pace of brain deterioration. However, the older dogs that could benefit from the training are rarely introduced to it. As we know, unlike puppies and young dogs, old dogs are almost never trained or even mentally challenged because senior dogs are, you know, perfect as I think, and uh, usually perfectly integrated into our lives. And we just kind of, you know, forgive them for any disobedience or stubbornness that they might have. But according to this new study, computer games paired with a reward system can replace demanding physical training and increase the dog's brain power. The study compared computer games for elderly dogs to elderly humans that play Sudoku games. The authors say, as the dogs get older, we increasingly and unconsciously reduce their level of regular training. But they add, we are not doing dogs any favors by doing that because dogs are capable of learning, even in old age. No matter what that's saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Not true. But to be totally honest here, the researchers who worked on this study admitted that it was challenging to get dogs acclimated to using touch screens. But they say once the dog learned how to do it, they turn into avid computer gamers. Of course, you know, some dogs are easier to teach and quicker to learn than others. They say dogs that were bred to hunt, retrieve, or herd are faster learners. On the other hand, dogs bred to guard livestock or track scents are usually slower. Hmm. But just remember, if you try this, rewarding dogs when they take part in touchscreen training is of the utmost paramount importance. Experts say, above all, the prospect of a reward is an important, if not the most important factor to motivate pets to do something new or challenging. And that regular brain training kind of shakes dogs out of their apathy in older age, increasing their motivation and engagement and thus maximizing new learning opportunities, which helps their memory. I'm glad to actually see them in front of the iPads, but I'm just a little bit concerned that they're all going to be sitting around the dinner table ignoring each other, playing with their iPads. <laughs> I doing know, little when dogs they could just woof across the table, right, yeah. instead of texting. That's a good point, Al. We do know that there are pet parents who do not like to vaccinate their pets, but consider this parallel. The deadly cat disease, feline panleukopenia, or cat plague, or FP, is on the rise in Australia now, and they say that is very significant because the sickness hasn't been an issue for cats down under for more than 40 years, thanks to the vaccine, which was developed in the 1970s. However, in the last couple of years, cat plague has reemerged there. Feline panleukopenia, or FP, is a very highly contagious virus that attacks cells which rapidly divide. Cells like those that are found in bone marrow, the intestines, or developing cells in unborn kittens. If the disease attacks and destroys bone marrow cells, then cats can no longer produce white blood cells, which is, of course, a very important part of the immune system. Infected cats then often often develop very serious secondary infections. The FP virus can be transmitted through through urine, through feces, or even from fleas from other cats. And it typically takes about two days for an infected cat or kitten to become symptomatic, so the risk of giving it to another cat during that period, you know, before contracting it and becoming symptomatic is extremely high. Another reason you might consider vaccinations. Yeah, and you know, I have a little a slight contention with the name plague um, because actually there is a disease of feline plague in the United States. Oh. And it's a different disease. So I think their use of plague is a bit different. And I think it just talks about the magnitude of an outbreak. Whereas um, panleukopenia, which is kind of cat parvo, is different than feline plague, which we see in the desert southwest in California, um, Colorado, Arizona, which is carried by flu. 
fleas um, and the rodents and fleas that carry this type of bacteria. So cat plague there is cat parvo here. Yeah, and, right? and I think they still actually have uh, the actual plague organism there, too. But I think the Australians' use of the word plague is kind of more like a um, infection, a widespread infection, than it is right. um, a specific disease name, because there is a disease for the plague. And just, just want to clarify that point a little bit. Is this FP anything we have to worry about in the U.S., Doc? Well, yeah, we actually do have it in the U.S. It's just at a relatively lower level in most communities because we've been good about vaccinating our kitties when they're young. Um, it's only in, when a population really isn't vaccinating that the disease will come back up to the surface and we'll start seeing more cases. It's been a while since I've seen a case at my hospital, probably about five years, but wow. we've seen it. So we got to vaccinate. That's what we got. Yeah, do. yeah, I know. Nobody wants to hear that with all of you know the current concerns with over vaccinating, but these diseases are still there, and there's a reason why they're not so prevalent because other people have done their job getting their kitties vaccinated. Are we up to date on the, all the vaccinations, Judy, on all the the animals? Sure, we are. Okay. It sure <laughs> helps though when the vets send out those those reminders, right? I mean, I, I look at those all the time, and I go, Oh my God, two days until this one expires or whatever. <laughs> but just be careful. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update. Get more at AnimalRadio.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. It is Animal Radio celebrating the connection with our pets on the phone with us no stranger to animal radio genevieve frederick is joining us she is i believe the founder of pets of the homeless you are the founder right that is correct pets of the homeless what do you guys do over there for new listeners that don't know about you yet oh my gosh well we have four unique programs but our mission statement is that we believe in that healing power of companion pets and the human animal bond And it's because these people find solace, protection, and companionship through their pets. And they care for their pets on limited resources, so they themselves have less. So our task, national, is to feed and provide basic emergency veterinary care to those pets and thus relieve the anguish and the anxiety of the homeless who cannot provide for those pets. You know, I still think that people's perception of the homeless having pets they don't agree with it in fact i was really shocked uh, about a week ago someone said i don't even know why homeless people would even have a pet and oh, it just, really? yes it really shocked me and you know when i talked wow. to him for a few minutes he really turned around 180 degrees he, he didn't realize yeah. it until i told him that you know this might be the only thing they have it keeps them gives him something to live for uh for a woman it could be protection and it gives yes. him unconditional love i thought oh and these these animals are actually kind of lucky because they're with their owners most of the time 24 7 they don't sit yeah. home alone nine to five waiting for mom to come home who's too busy <laughs> when she does you know? absolutely absolutely and you know what if we can turn these people around, then they'll have more compassion and yes. empathy for what's going on. I, homelessness is not decreasing by any means because of the not enough low house, low income housing across America. It's forcing more and more people to live on the edge. Yes, absolutely. Now I understand that you're putting a search out for more veterinarians. Absolutely. We, you know, we're always um, looking for vets that are willing to work with us. And it's not that we don't pay them by any means. We ask them for a 20 to 25 percent discount. So all your listeners, you know, talk to your own doc and ask them, hey, you know, I found out about this program. Maybe you could call them and say, yeah, you're willing to work with us and if we have a an emergency case in that community, we'll have somebody that we can call right away, that we don't have to cold call hospitals in that area. We'll have somebody that wants to work with us, and we're, we would be delighted if we could add more and more hospitals to our network. Are some of these veterinarians receptive to the cold calls that they get from you? 
you know, sometimes they are not. Sometimes they are um, busy and they don't have an appointment available. Sometimes they don't want to work with a nonprofit. And to be honest, some of them just don't want a homeless person and that animal in their uh, hospital, in their waiting room. Uh, They just don't want to get that reputation. But unfortunately, um, that's the case. That's reality. But their 90% of them are just delighted to be able to help. Mm, Wonderful. So if somebody wants to help out, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, go to our website or call us, uh, and all that information is on our website at petsofthehomeless.org. Mm, wonderful. You are doing amazing work. As always, our uh, airwaves are yours whenever you need to uh, put a search out for veterinarians or any kind of help whatsoever. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your support, and um, I loved your radio station. You're awesome. Take care now. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our chicken rolled food as a meal or shred it as a topper. This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Fear Free. Fear Free takes the pet out of petrified and puts the treat into treatment. To learn more and find a certified Fear Free veterinary professional near you, visit fearfreepets.com. It is Animal Radio celebrating the connection with our pets. We'll head back to the phones in just a couple of seconds. First, we're going to visit with Monique Fairchild. She's a licensed vet tech, and she also sits on the executive council for the Fear Free Movement. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How are you doing today? Where are you? I am doing just great. I am just outside Seattle, Washington. I'm at work today in the hospital, just running some anesthesia in between phone calls. Yeah, you you spend a good amount of time. By the way, if you have to go, you just let me know. I... <laughs> oh, you're fine. You're good. We slate, we, you're in the schedule. You're good. <laughs> okay. You do a lot of training, behavior training, and I wanted to ask you a few questions about that if you have a little bit of time. Uh, you've handled many canine behavior cases. How do you think us as owners are we doing? Are we doing a good job training our animals? You know, I think it depends a little bit on how you measure good job. Okay. I think a lot of you know, most relationships between families and pets are pretty successful. People like their dog. They enjoy living with their dog. They have a nice relationship. The dog gets to stay with them for their whole life. I think that's probably a training success. If we measure training success through, do people understand that they're training or not training? Are they getting the behaviors that they want all the time from their animals? Maybe they're a little bit less successful. Yes. You know, I still hear people, I can't believe to this day, say that a puppy is too young to train and you should wait until they're at least six months because they won't retain any knowledge or anything that you have to wait till they're older. Well, I would disagree with that, certainly. Uh, learning happens all the time. And puppies, their eyes and ears open around two weeks of age, and they're ready to take on, take in lots of new sensory information at that age. And the sooner you start training, the better. You might not be training something complicated like agility or competitive obedience or service dog tasks until they're a little bit older. But things like having good manners, being social with other animals, being social with people, being accustomed to a variety of different kinds of handling, like for when you need to go to the vet or when you need to be groomed or when you need to be, receive a pill, that kind of thing. All that training can start right away, not to mention house training. I think that everybody would be disappointed if they waited until six months to start teaching their puppy to be house trained. Absolutely. So what do you think the biggest mistake is you see with owners training? I think a lot of owners fail to acknowledge right behavior. So they tend to respond when something's going right, wrong. So right but, behavior. So they only yeah, acknowledge... like the, desired behaviors. Okay. When the dog is doing the right thing but it doesn't bother the, bother the owner, they tend to ignore that and only respond to the dog or acknowledge if there's a problem going on. So say, for instance, if we use the example of being in the kitchen and getting up on the counter, 
generally, if the dog is wandering around the kitchen as a puppy and doing a great job staying on the floor and keeping four on the floor, most owners are going to ignore that really good behavior that they really want, and they're only going to respond when the dog jumps up and put their, puts their paws on the counter to try and do some counter surfing. So Unfortunately, some dogs might get a little bit of a boost from yep. that interaction where they get touched and talked to, and it generates a little bit of excitement. And sometimes that promotes the counter surfing behavior instead of getting rid of it. And that's an example of a time where the dog was doing the right thing, kind of got ignored, did the wrong thing, got a bunch of attention, and we had a missed opportunity to reinforce right behavior that was happening all on its own. So let me get this straight. When they're doing good stuff, we don't give them the accolades, and they don't think, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't get that boost, that ego boost, that id boost. But when they counter surf, then we get all excited and everything. And it, mm-hmm. while it may be that we're mad, they just see excitement, right? And, and... Exactly. Or even like jumping up on us. Ah. If we come home and the dog's staying on the floor, oh, hi, how are you? And you get the happy wags and smiling face at you. We ignore them until they jump up on us and we're like, hey, heck, what are you doing? Get off me. Well, they got us to stop ignoring them. It was really effective. They got us to look at them and touch them and talk to them. And even though we might have in our head, oh, I'm scolding the puppy for jumping on me, it was better than ignoring. We ignored the right behavior and we acknowledged the one that we didn't want. Uh And I think that's a really common mistake. Okay, so on the other hand, what are we doing right with our dogs? Yeah, are we doing anything right? Oh, everybody's doing lots of things right. We have lots lots of happy people living with lots of happy dogs. Okay. In today's, in you know, today, I think one thing that a lot of people are doing right that they maybe didn't used to do is they're reaching out and asking for help when they need help. Help is so available. We're in the technology age. People can get on Facebook or they can get on, you know, get on social media. They can get online and watch videos. They can do all this kind of stuff. And it's easier to reach out to a trainer than it ever has been before. Everybody has a website. Everybody is on social media. It's easy to get a hold of people. So I think something that people are doing really right is asking for help when they feel like they need it and recognizing that that help is available. It can be sometimes difficult for owners to differentiate good versus potentially harmful methods when they're seeking help. But I think reaching out for help is something that dog owners are really doing a better job than they did in the past. You are a bevy of information, and I I hear people actually call you Monikopedia just because you you know a lot about training. (laughs) Uh, Will you share a couple of your top tips? Absolutely. Um, For me... I want training to be a part of my everyday interaction and part of my relationship with my dog. Don't have training be something you set aside on the calendar and hope that you get to those five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes during the day. We're all so busy. It's not going to happen. I mean, it's hard enough for people to get their kids to brush their teeth. It's asking a lot to set aside 15 minutes to train a puppy every day. So make training part of what you're already doing. You're already feeding the dog, make your mealtime a training session. You're already playing toy games with the dog, make your toy games part of a training session. Take advantage, leverage the time you're already spending, building your relationship with that dog, and build in some training exercises during those times. And then the other thing is, find, I tell people, try to identify 50 to 100 right decisions that your puppy makes every day. <laughs> So watch the puppy when it's going around the house, and if it doesn't jump on the counter, treat. If it doesn't jump on you, treat. Oh, you're staying on the floor on your bed holding still? That's amazing. Guess what? You get a treat for that. Recognize the activities of daily life that you need that dog to do and acknowledge and reinforce them when they happen in the situation. Oh, absolutely wonderful information. Monique, I'm going to let you get back to that anesthesia, okay? (laughs) Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for visiting with us. Take care. Have a great day. This portion of Animal Radio was underwritten by Fear Free. The veterinarian isn't typically thought of as your pet's favorite place to go. With Fear Free, that all changes. To learn more and find a certified Fear Free veterinary professional near you, visit fearfreepets.com. Those big, scary storms can be terrifying for your pet, and we know that when they're stressed, so are you. Take good care of your buddy with VetraScience Composure. VetraScience Composure helps ease anxiety for pets caused by storms, travel, and owner separation. It won't sedate them, and your pets will love the taste. Also, try our Glycoflex for hip and joint health, as well as multivitamins and probiotics. Find VetraScience supplements at your local pet store, Petco, or your vet. Learn more at VetraScience.com. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. And we love our animals like nobody's business here at Animal Radio. You probably do, too, since you're listening. And you'll, you'd probably do almost anything for your animal. There's a brand new study out that shows that mankind actually, where's that study? 
shows that mankind has more empathy for pooches in dire circumstances than suffering people. Hmm, in wow. fact, these guys did a study. This happened over in the UK. They did a they staged two phony donation campaigns, one for a dog and one for a man. Of course, the pooch drew more contributions. This is probably no surprise to you, uh, but we're going to have Dr. John Huber on this hour, and he's going to confirm that, yeah, if you, if you feel more empathy towards your animals than you do a human, it's okay. A lot of people are like that. Now, he's a clinical forensic psychologist. I'm not sure what that means. It sounds like it has something to do with uh, law and yeah. police work. Courts. Something like that. Yeah. So he's on this hour in just a few minutes right here on Animal Radio. We're also going to take your calls toll-free at one 405 8405 And you can ask your questions from the free Animal Radio app for iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. And Lori, in about half hour, we're going to do a quick check from the Animal Radio newsroom. What do you have on tap? Uh, there, you know, we always try to keep you posted and up to date on what's going on in this world of trying to bring on uh, emotional support animals onto airline flights. And there's this one case that is really grabbing a lot of headlines right now. And it's not so much about the animal that's bizarre, but ooh, the circumstances that surrounded it not making the flight. You can't go a week these days without some kind of service animal <laughs> yeah, airplane problem. Yeah, right. Okay, that's on the way in just a few minutes. Do you want to talk to Dr. Debbie right now or Joey Villani? 1-866-405-8405. Hey, Donald. Hello. How are you doing? Okay. Where are you calling from today? Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh, love it in Reading. So I have the whole team here for you. What's going on? Well, I have three dogs here. I have a shit sapu. <laughs> supposed to be, it's supposed to be a Shih Tzu, but it's a Shih Tzu Poo. I have a Masa Apsa, and I have a Sheltie. Now, I use Advantix 2 flea prevention on them. The Shih Tzu Poo and the Masa Apsa are fine with it, but when I go to put it on the Sheltie, she makes tracks for the kennel like it hurts her. And I would not want to hurt her. I mean, my wife died 15 months ago, and he's the only... Thing I have anymore, so sure. just oh, wondering if so that sorry. hurts her. Well, does she besides running? Does she do anything else? Is she scratching at herself or panting? No, 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 no. But I mean, she's smart enough that she knows the drawer that I have it in, and <laughs> you go to the drawer to get it out, and she takes off like a bullet. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, one or two things could be going on. Um, you know, we could have a highly um, acclimated dog who senses that we're going to be messed with and doesn't want to be messed with. You know, this is not unlike any kind of mind that, you know, they pull out a bottle of ear cleanser and just show that to their dog and their dog is running because, you know, it feels weird. Uh, it may not necessarily hurt, but it's an unpleasant sensation and dogs don't understand it's for their own good. So, you know, it could be that, you know, just being held still, having something done, she's somehow associated that there's something bad happening and she you know, doesn't like that. But there is actually the possibility of something that we call dermal paresthesia. And it's a, a type of a topical reaction that can occur to some types of flea products, usually those that are in the pyrethrin family. Um, and this is in a, like a topical spot on product or, you know, or shampoo or what have you. But what can happen is this class of um, flea control medications in some dogs, and this is pretty unusual, um, but it actually can cause like a pins and needles sensation. So it doesn't necessarily hurt, but it can actually cause them to feel funky um, and have that sensation not just in that area, but sometimes all over their body. Um, usually if a dog is doing this, they, we'll see some weird things besides, you know, running away. You know, we might see them scratching at the area. Some will pant, seem very anxious or vocalize. Um, those would be those pets that I'd be worried, ooh, you know, this may be just an inherent sensitivity to this um, topical medication. And if that's the case, um, any type of medicine that we use that has a pyrethrin or pyrethroid um, flea component in there could have the same effect. Um, so for those pets, I might then go to something in more of a pill form. Um, Capstar or Comfortis um, are, you know, some pill forms of flea control that kind of bypass without using that class of drug in any way. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to hurt her. She's my baby now, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's hard. You know, they can't tell us. You know, it's a weird kind of sensation, you know, that pins and needle thing. And you can only imagine for a pet that doesn't really understand where it's coming from, right. you know, if it is occurring, you know, they're going to have a, a, a negative reaction to, you know, whatever's preceding that that event. So certainly I mean, a possibility. Going, we have a bed, the bed that we have here, you can raise the foot and you can raise the head of it and there's wires underneath it and she chewed off the wires underneath it the other night. <gasps> Oh, uh-oh. Uh, now, so I have to ask you, does she have any resistance to anything else that you do to her? Do you brush your dog's teeth? Um, do you clean their ears? Anything like that? Mm, no, she doesn't have any any problem with that. It's just this stuff. When you, she just needs to go onto okay. the drawer and get, get the box out, she takes off like a bullet. Okay. Well, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm I'm going to say that I don't think she sounds like she's acting up. Um, I would say she may be sensitive to that kind of product. and I, I Maybe I ought to um, switch it to something else. Yeah, so you ask your vet about some of the pill form of flea control products, and for her, you just may you know switch over to to something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I didn't didn't want to hurt her. I mean, that's the main thing. I know, absolutely. And you know, the sensation itself isn't painful, but if it's distressing, doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt. If it distresses your dog, that's you know psychological you right. know, pain. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Well, thanks for calling, Donald, and uh, you know, hopefully she won't do that with other things. Now, that would be the other thing is to test other products that have nothing to do with flea control. Put that on her and see if she acts the same way. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Thank you very much. Thanks, Donald. You're Toll welcome. free, one 405 8405 And don't forget, you can also ask your questions for the free Animal Radio app for iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. Judy, whenever she uh, pulls out the shampoo for the dog bath, I don't even even that. before that, I, I just have to think. You just think that you're going to give your dog <laughs> yes. a bath. Ladybug takes off. Yes, I just get up and say, uh, you know, and I go in towards the kitchen, which I do twenty times a day. But yet she knows the one time I'm going in there to start her bath. I don't get it. <laughs> How do they know that? Stuff? I don't know. Don't I'm get trying it. to think that I don't give her any body cues or anything. You know, but you, you may not think that, but there generally are, because I have the same problem when I pull out my grooming um, apron at home. So the sight of that will make my dogs kind of go the other way. They kind of quietly slink away. <laughs> it's not that they hate their baths. I'm sure they find other things they'd rather do, but then there's the other things. There's the getting the towels out of the cabinet. There's like the eye contact, like right. looking for the leash. Where are you? I'm going to get you. <laughs> so they pick up on all that stuff. But I don't even get that out yet. She doesn't even give me a chance to get that out. I just go in the kitchen and I turn around and she's running for the bedroom. There's probably a cue that you don't even know about. Don't Opening a cabinet, the sound of it, maybe no. the smell of it. I'm not I'm just I'm just walking into the kitchen. I'm not I haven't touched the faucet. I haven't done anything and I turn around and she's gone. And I go into the kitchen 20 times a day, and she's fine until the one time I go in there. Maybe she can read your thoughts. I there don't you go. Know. I was just going to say, doggy ESP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to say this healthy serving of Animal Radio is brought to you by the grain free Red Barn Naturals canned food for dogs and cats, always made in the USA with natural, functional ingredients to support your pet's optimal health. You can learn more over at redbarninc.com and Thank you, Red Barn, for underwriting Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1 866 405 8405. Hello, Animal Radians. It's Robert Sembro, your Pet World Insider, here with this week's Animal Radio list five ways to up your pet parenting game during National Responsible Pet Owners Month. So I know most of you are thinking, Rob, I'm a responsible pet owner. And I'm certain that you are. Still, taking on the lifelong commitment to care for a pet is more than an act of love. It's a promise of responsible actions for another living being. Since we can all step up our game, here are five simple ways you can step up your responsible pet ownership efforts. So let's start with something that isn't just being responsible, it's being smart. Be proactive by going around your house and pet-proofing your home. When's the last time you did that? Probably when you just adopted them into your home. Whether that was last week or many years ago, your home has changed. Take a pet's eye view of your home now and see what temptations and dangers can be avoided. It may not only save your pet's life, it may save your pocketbook as well. Next, take some time to research what your pet's nutritional needs are. I was recently at a pet event and I was somewhat surprised to hear the answers to a question I posed to different pet owners. 
That was, what are your pet's nutritional needs for your type of pet to thrive? If you don't know, that's okay. But be responsible and seek out a pet nutritionist or expert in that area to find out what your pet really needs. It will benefit both you and your pet to know what their nutritional needs really are. Responsible healthcare habits is another area that many of us can step up our responsible pet parenting activities. This is wide ranging from regular grooming to exercise to an annual vet checkup. As a responsible pet parent, we should be in contact with and or observing our pets in close proximity for any changes in their health on a daily basis, both physically and mentally. You're their pet health care manager, and you're going to need to make the call on which team member you need assistance from to care for your pet. Another way to up your game is to learn something new with your pet. Whether it's an activity or way to give extra care at home, find something that you and your pet can embark on together to improve their lives and enhance your pet ownership experience. The last one is the easiest, but it's often the one most sacrificed. Responsible pet ownership requires time and prioritization. Just like children, your pets need to be at the top of your prioritization list, and you must make the time to not only care for them, but to be a part of their lives. They're resourceful and forgiving, but what they really want is something that you can't buy or have someone else give to them. That's you, your love, and your care. Share your ideas on how to be the best responsible pet owner on our Animal Radio Facebook page. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. Hi friends, this is Dr. Marty Becker, America's veterinarian. After a traumatic experience at the veterinary office, have you ever thought to yourself, there has to be a better way? When your veterinarian is fear-free certified, you'll find your pet's vet visit is safer, more comfortable, and actually enjoyable. Your dog will go from shaking in the lobby to pulling you into the exam room with a wagging tail, and your cat will be purring inside the carrier. To find a certified fear-free veterinarian near you, go to fearfreepets.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. It's Animal Radio, and regular listeners may remember Dr. Debbie fostering a little kitten for about eight weeks, long time. Three months, we Three months, her, yeah. really? Mm-hmm. And a gift for your mother-in-law? As I, as I, for, for my mom and dad. For your mom and dad. How's that yeah. kitten doing? She's doing fabulous. She's growing like a weed. Um, she has some kind of things that she particularly like she likes to watch ceiling fans for entertainment um so do also I. Followed, <laughs> but on the intellectual side she does like watching the stock market oh well that's um, good and, and, my husband has that habit, too, <laughs> so I think he, she got it from him. But she's having a great time. Um, she loves looking out and seeing snow in the Midwest, which, you know, of course, in the desert, we Didn't don't really enjoy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she's really doing fabulous, um, getting into usual kitten trouble. But, you know, we expect that out of her. Now, your husband grew very, very attached to Moxie, I believe. Moxie was her, her Original uh, foster it. name. It's yes, she's now changed. known as Callie. Okay. So yes, um, and so, yeah, so, so did one of your dogs, Nikki, didn't she? Yeah, they they all got attached. Yes, yeah, my Bouvier, who's like eighty pounds, um, 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 amazingly, she was so gentle with this little creature. She loved it, and it's totally changed her outlook on cats. When she sees them outside, she used to want to chase cats outside, and now she looks at them and it's like, oh, wow, well, hey, come over <laughs> here. Oh. <laughs> so I anticipate someday down the road we'll be ending up adding another feline to our house. That's what I was asking. That's what I was getting to there, and I kind of suspected that. Uh, so keep us posted on that, if you will. If you have added a cat to your household or a dog or any kind of animal, we'd love to hear from you toll free at one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. especially if you have a question about that animal. Dr. Debbie's well-versed. As I've mentioned before, she practices in Las Vegas where you see just a lot of strange animals. So she knows about your cats, your dogs, your reptiles, and your flamingos. And if you'd like to talk to her now, you can also ask your questions from the free animal radio app for iPhone and Android, by the way. So if you, if you don't have time to call now, there's always the Animal Radio app leader. And uh, the same goes for, for Joey. He's uh, probably one of the best groomers I know. Definitely is the best groomer I know. And he also grooms a lot of different types of animals. He's from Jersey, where they also have a lot of different kinds of animals to, <laughs> to groom. Hey, Bertha, welcome to Animal Radio. Thank you. I have Dr. Debbie right here. What's going on with your pet? 
Oh, Daisy has fleas. She picked them up. I just can't. I'm at my wit's end. I can't get rid of them. All right. Where are you at? What, what part of the country? We're in northern Wisconsin. Okay. Hey, I was just up in that area, up in the Krivitz area. Oh, okay. We're a little further north than that. We're right up by Lake Superior. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I had a great time with those cheese curds and, <laughs> and beer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so fleas. Okay, so are, are you battling that with any kind of products? She's on Frontline Plus. Okay, well, and are, are you having any success or any issues well, with that? Well, what happened is we spent in southern Texas where it was warm, and she picked them up there, and I started her on Frontline there, and we thought she was flea-free when we came home, and then they just reappeared. I took her to my vet here at home, and they gave me some new Frontline and kind of... You know, told me to go home and use it. But that's been two months now, and she's still, um, I comb fleas off her every day. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, there's there's definitely some talk out in the veterinary world, and a lot of different sides will debate whether or not we're seeing any particular resistance of fleas to some of the common uh, flea and tick products out there. So, um, you know, again, it, it, there's some debate out there. But for any pet, I see that if we're having, if we're using flea control products, and we're very comfortable that that's being used appropriately, meaning on the, the right time, frequency, and we're sure that the pet is getting the medication appropriately, if we're still seeing fleas after two months, for me, I think it's time to look at another product. Um, whether or not it's flea resistance or some other factors, we have other um, environmental issues, uh, you know, reinfestation from the environment. Um, but still, I'm a little superstitious, and I might look at trying another product. Um, so as far as um, you know, fleas, uh, ticks, all that type of thing, I'm I'm actually a fan of using Advantage in Ad- Advantix too. Um, same kind of topical type thing. You might give that a whirl, see if that gives your your pet a little bit more relief. Um, and uh, you know, really, it's just kind of a matter of uh, making sure that you're also staying up with things like the flea combing, vacuuming that environment, and um, being very diligent and making sure we're treating all the pets in the household so that if you've got any cats, uh, rabbits, uh, ferrets, um, that we need to make sure we're treating anyone that might be a reservoir for the fleas inside the home. Um, and this doesn't mean, sorry, that's my puppy trying to play with my microphone. Um, hazard of the job here with a puppy on my lap. Um, uh, but yeah, so we want to make sure we do treat everybody in the household there. Okay, we we have no other pets, and I, I have been vacuuming and washing the bedding because she jumps up on the bed and sleeps with us. And Yeah, it's frustrating. It's a battle. And, um, you know, that's why I thank the Lord that I live in Las Vegas because we have very few fleas. Because we know one flea could actually lead up to 600 offspring within just one month's time. Oh, okay. So they really have this ability to just exponentially uh, reproduce in the environment. And they're, they're tough little boogers they can jump 100 times their height so you know eight to ten feet off the pet um, is very easy and doable in their environment so you know we're battling some really tough little critters it's kind of like the cockroaches in like the big cities you know you can't get rid of them (laughs) so you do your best um, so but you might try some of those other products and see if that does you some better good okay and can i get the advantage at my local pet store or yeah, usually you can find that. Now, what I often recommend is to work with your veterinarian, especially if you are changing from one product to another. There are some um, precautions we might have, especially with products like Advantage and uh, Advantix. They're only for dogs, so we don't want to be using those on kitties. There's kitty-specific ones um, that we'd use in, those, uh, in that line. Um, and we also want to make sure we're not doubling up and repeating uh, medication from what you just gave. So I would do that first with your veterinarian's um, guidance and make sure that we're not... Uh, not overdoing it for your baby at this point. Okay. Thank you so much, Bertha, and good luck with those fleas. Uh-oh. And then have some curds for me. I'm missing them already. <laughs> <laughs> All dogs should eat a pH balanced alkaline diet. An alkaline diet reduces health risks and can also reduce scratching, shedding, and hot spots. So does this mean you need to check your dog's pH balance? No, because Canine Caviar has created the first and only alkaline dog food that is pH balanced. It also has the highest metabolized calories. What does this mean? Your dog needs to eat less. Get a healthier dog and save money with Canine Caviar products. Find them at your local pet supply store or online at caninecaviar.com. This is an Animal Radio News Update. 
I'm Lori Brooks. Well, this story has become the latest controversial case in airlines versus people who want to travel with their emotional support animals on airplanes. Uh, it has stirred a lot of conversations and, and caused a lot of online emotional venting, and virtually all of it is not good. It all began last Thanksgiving weekend, so a few months ago, when a pet hamster was flushed down a toilet in an airport restroom. Supposedly, after the airline, which was Spirit Airlines, refused to let a 21-year-old college student bring her pet hamster, Pebbles, onto a flight as an emotional support animal, or ESAs, as we call them for short. The woman's attorney is now accusing the airline of causing his client to flush pebbles down the toilet after being denied a seat on the flight with her hamster. The woman says an airline employee suggested that, the flushing. But the airline strongly denies the accusation. And as is the case in many similar stories, the student says she was told over the phone by an airline employee that she could fly with her hamster as an ESA, but that the airline would not let her on the flight with the hamster once she got to the airport. Well, the young woman was a college student in Pennsylvania, but was withdrawing from school due to a medical issue, and she was flying home. She was going home to Florida from the BWI, Baltimore Airport. Now, the airline statement from Spirit Airlines says, after researching this incident, we can say calmly, Confidently, that at no point did any of our agents suggest this guest or any other, for that matter, flush or otherwise injure an animal. However, Spirit's spokesperson did acknowledge that a reservation agent, unfortunately, did misinform her that her hamster was permitted to fly as an ESA, but the airline's website does say that it does not accept snakes, other reptiles, rodents, ferrets, and spiders. And just so it's clear and everyone knows, the Federal Department of Transportation's guidelines state airlines are never required to accept snakes, reptiles, rodents, ferrets, or spiders, and that unusual animals or pets, that those animals are to be evaluated on a case-by-case basis. You know, that that whole story leaves me speechless (laughs) on so many levels. You know, I yeah. posted it over the weekend because I was just incensed. I, I thought I didn't lo- like, I mean, there, of course, you know, we're a, a radio show and we're not dedicating 15 minutes of print to this. But she went into the restroom and said that she spent 10 minutes tearfully, you know, crying inside the restroom after she flushed the hamster. And I thought, geez, and you know, it would take a lot more than 10 minutes. And how do you just get over it and move on? And as a lot of people who also read the article said, when did that even become an option? And just because somebody suggested to you, sure. you are fully yeah. capable of saying no. Yes. And I should have. I wouldn't have done it. Well, of course not. No. Well, anyone with a half a brain wouldn't have done, done it. it. Yeah. I would think I'd be getting punked. Like, you've got to have a camera here. There's yes. no way, no reasonable person yes. will suggest this. Oh, oh my. Yeah, I think it, I, I would have been outraged at the counter. Like, how could you even say such a thing? Just crazy. But now, you know, it could turn into a, a big lawsuit. I'm Lori Brooks. You can get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update. Get more at AnimalRadio.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. It's so easy to reach out to Animal Radio. You can call 1-866-405-8405. It is toll-free from any phone in the continental and I believe uh, even in Alaska and Hawaii, too. If you're listening in one of these beautiful states, and if you are, come on, what are you doing? I mean, turn off the radio and go outside. (laughs) And if you're in Alaska, it's cold. Uh, We have Dr. John Huber joining us. Dr. John Huber is a clinical forensic psychologist, and I have no idea what that means, really. But I'm going to let him explain. Hi, doctor. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Thanks for having me on Animal Radio. Thanks. So what is a clinical forensic psychologist? Well, I'm a clinical psychologist, but I've also been trained 
in issues related to court proceedings, for example, competency to stand trial, insanity defense, child custody evaluations, and sentencing type things. I just worked on a federal case with a guy looking at the, uh, uh, life without parole. So, Okay. You've done a little bit of research or you found out that we may prefer our dogs over humans in many, many different instances. Is that correct? Definitely. I mean, even my own producer admits to to skipping out on dinner parties to hang with his dogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excuse that I'll, I'll hear. I don't know why, but I'll hear uh, ladies will say to me, I've got to go home and shampoo my dog or, or let my dog out or something like that. <laughs> oh, what? You've never heard that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I noticed when uh, when one of my animals passed recently, I was a little more upset than when when I one of my human uh, right. relatives passed. And uh, this is apparently very common. It is. In fact, there, is. Y- you did some research, or you found out that there were students that were shown fake newspaper clippings of a baseball attack on a puppy an adult dog, a year-old infant, and a 30-year-old adult. What were the results from that? <laughs> well, um, you know, basically the, the, the puppy and the baby were pretty much in a dead heat, uh, but the dog, you know, and the puppy totally, you know, was chosen over the adult, period. There was no, no question at all. And, you know, you, you think about it, You know, the one amazing thing about puppies and dogs is it's unconditional. If you don't have the money for the best food, they don't care. They love you for who you are. And there's not a lot of places in this world that we can get that. Is it true, like on, you know, crowdfunding, some of those websites, that if it's for an animal, people tend to give more than it is for a person who needs maybe like a surgery or something? If they both needed surgery, the animal ends up getting more? In general, that's that's what we're finding, that, you know, if you really, really want to, to, to raise money for something, an animal, especially a, a dog or a puppy, man, they, they get many more donations uh, than, than humans, period. What do you think are some of the reasons why we uh, love our dogs more than people? <laughs> well, you know, again, it doesn't matter what kind of day you've had. You don't have to explain yourself when you're in a bad mood. And then they still love you. And, you know, what? how many licks on the face does it take to get to the center of your heart? You know, forget the tutu pop, you know, and all of a sudden you're in a better mood. So, you know, the, that, that connection that we have with our pets is just amazing. And, you know, we're blessed to have those four leg, four-legged furry friends. That's, that's all I can really say. Judy is obsessive about her dog. I mean, she's, <laughs> hey. she spoils her dogs. She, she's always with dog. her dog. Is that uh, unusual, strange behavior? Or is she, where does she sit on the mental spectrum? You know what I mean? Well, you know, one of the questions I always get is, you know, well, I dress my dog up for Halloween and then for Christmas and maybe Thanksgiving, you know, and and I understand special occasions. Uh, I think maybe if it gets a little obsessive, if you're dressing your dog up every single day. Now, we talked, I heard you just a minute ago talking about Alaska. You know, some dogs are just not meant for that kind of cold and you need to help protect them and they have, you know, coats and sweaters and things like that for them. That, that That's a little different. But, you know, if you're spending money that would normally go to your food, for example, on buying extra clothes for your dog, I think you might need to come in and talk to me. Mm. Is it wrong for me to cancel plans with people to stay home with my dog? I don't think it's wrong. Absolutely not, Judy. (laughs) (laughs) Is this your mom or your your (laughs) brother-in-law? You know, we can... (laughs) What about the the person who decides to save the life of a dog over a human? In, in some catastrophic situation, they have the choice and they, they choose the dog. Well, you know, it, it's really interesting. If you look at genetic predisposition, what we know is if you have a child, that child is 50% your genetics. And what we see is the research says you would save that child over your dog. Your grandchild is 25% your genes. And the right there seems to be that cutoff. Anything less than that, and we'd save the dog first. Wow. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time today. You actually make me feel normal. <laughs> well, you are normal. Come on. I, I, think, I love my dogs and my cats. Yeah, we all do. And some people, you know, they think it's funny 
that we we uh, dress up our animals or we love we spoil them or we move all around the bed at night so that they're just nice and comfortable in bed. <laughs> I had that. My cat woke me up about four times last night because he didn't like where I was laying. So, <laughs> so you you have cats. I have a cat and a dog. And, yeah, uh, well, and then I have two children, too. I have to feed them. So <laughs> <laughs> So after the show, Hal, I know we had a date for lunch, but I'm not available. Not going to happen not today. Not going to happen, no. Okay. No, no, sorry. <laughs> Dr. John Huber, thank you so much for hanging with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We're going to head back to the phones for your calls toll-free at 1-866-405-8405. Or you can ask your questions from the free Animal Radio app for iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. <laughs> You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. Those big, scary storms can be terrifying for your pet, and we know that when they're stressed, so are you. Take good care of your buddy with VetraScience Composure. VetraScience Composure helps ease anxiety for pets caused by storms, travel, and owner separation. It won't sedate them, and your pets will love the taste. Also, try our Glycoflex for hip and joint health, as well as multivitamins and probiotics. Find VetraScience supplements at your local pet store, Petco, or your vet. Learn more at VetraScience.com. In today's automotive news, Toyota roll out three Toyota Racing Division, or TRD Pro, vehicles in Chicago. A 2019 Tundra TRD Pro, 2019 Forerunner TRD Pro, and a 2019 Tacoma TRD Pro. Voodoo Blue is the new TRD Pro exclusive color. Unique TRD skid plates, and on the Tacoma TRD Pro, a cat black exhaust. The Forerunner has black wheels, roof rack, and JBL audio system. To see more, go to ourautoexpert.com. I'm Nick Miles. Trust the friendly, knowledgeable parts professionals at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Our professionals know what it takes to get the job done right. Professional technicians have counted on O'Reilly Auto Parts for years. Come see for yourself. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts. Better prices. Every day. Dogs or cats. Horse or emu. Animals are people too. A British cat's bad behavior has forced his owner to post a sign that reads, Warning, dangerous cat has attacked 13 people in the last six years. Ann Hogbin says 12-year-old Blackie is as gentle as a kitten, often curling up in her lap for a nap. But he turns into a different cat when he sees a man in uniform. So far, five postmen, one police officer, five paper boys, a garbage man, and a construction worker have been attacked by Blackie. Blackie was known for chasing his victims down the street, but even now that he's an indoor cat, his behavior hasn't changed. Anne recently came home to find blood on her letterbox after Blackie attacked the mailman's hand as he pushed the letters in. Blackie no longer has access to the front door. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1 866 405 8405. Now, the research is out, and yes, as Lori predicted and prognosticated, we spent a lot of money on our animals this month Mm -hmm. simply because it was Valentine's Day and Valentine's Month. I didn't realize that buying your uh, your animals, your cats, your dogs, Valentine's gifts was, was a thing, but apparently this year <laughs> it is. And of course, the most important thing you can give them is great health, and that includes dental health. It is, what is it, Dental Health it's Month for Pet, pet Dental, dental health, health, health Month? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, February is nationally known as Pet Dental Care Month, and um, you know a lot of veterinarians like myself, we run... Sp- Specials and kind of you know different discounts for people to to maybe encourage them to uh, embrace dental care for their pets. People say that uh, that whole dental care thing is just all for vanity, but that's not true with animals. No, it's not. You know, dental disease in dogs. You know, it's it's more than what it looks like. Um, you know, it's a bacterial film that builds up on the teeth that eventually will c- become solid with its mineral deposits, and it actually will start to cause problems under the gum line. So that means that that translates to what we call periodontal disease. 
disease. It loosens that attachment of the tooth to the gum, and eventually we can get tooth loss, we can get infections under the gum line, and um, other problems, even sometimes facial abscesses. But, you know, the thing that I find so entirely frustrating is we're doing a lot of dentals, you know, and, and it's important to clean teeth, yes. But when we identify a problem, either by probing or taking an x-ray, we can, as veterinarians tell you, your pet has a problem. And dogs and cats don't complain about these things. There's really a problem there. I can see it with my naked eye or with this x-ray. And I'm telling you, this tooth needs to go. Sometimes we can save teeth and we can do advanced techniques. You know, we can do root canals, periodontal treatments. Sometimes we can't. And it's actually in the best interest to remove a tooth. So how would you guys respond if your vet said, hey, I got to pull six teeth? Yeah, if that's what's got to be done. It's got to be done. But I'm yeah. concerned about age. If my dog was was a uh, you know 14 or 15 years old, I'd be worried about the Undergoing. anesthesia. I mean, okay. I'm just being honest with you, Doc. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and so there's always that concern with you know age and you know is it appropriate for the pet you know to be under for a dental procedure. So you know that's something I think we have to kind of go on a case by case basis. But you know if your pet is under anesthesia right now and I'm calling to tell you, hey, I've just noted I have six teeth that are in dire straits, we need to address them or they're going to put the other teeth in jeopardy. I cannot tell you how many people say no. Really? I refuse to have you pull those teeth. I don't want my dog to not have teeth in its mouth. Wow. And that is the backlash that I find very frustrating because it's an education point that leaving a rotten, loose tooth in the mouth (laughs) in many people's eyes is more normal and it's more what they prefer than extracting teeth because of the concept of pulling teeth. They think it's okay to leave a rotten tooth in their dog or cat's mouth? For whatever reason, whether it is the concept of having something removed or, you know, for pets that don't have routine dental care, meaning you don't brush their teeth at home and they don't go in every year for a dental cleaning, things happen and things will progress. And if we only get to clean teeth, say, at a pet's fifth or sixth birthday, there's already stuff going on we can't undo. And sometimes, unfortunately, pulling teeth is a necessary evil. So I guess my my gripe for the day is if your veterinarian has identified a problem and says the tooth has to go, ask why. What is the pathology? What is the consequence of leaving that tooth in? And if it's not a consequence, yeah, maybe you can revisit it down the road. But in many cases, these pets are going home with teeth that are hurting them that because they don't complain their owners are missing the opportunity to, to get ahead of that pain and, and address that disease. Mm. Yeah, I think, well, how could there not be a consequence if the, if the tooth is rotten or whatever? Am I seeing that right? right? Yeah. No, there's, there's definitely a consequence. There are some rare instances of incisors that may have some looseness but don't have a lot of periodontal disease. So those are very rare instances. But when, you know, I have pictures of dogs. We actually had a video we took showing the person that the teeth were loose. We could stick a probe up halfway under the tooth because they refused to allow us to, to do what we needed to do. So we showed that when they picked the dog up, and they were happy as pie. They just thought, you know, no big deal. And so that was an education point. It was very difficult to get through to that individual that we aren't doing everything we need. Clean teeth, making them look clean for one day does not solve that dog's dental care. Mm. See, that's I'm why sorry. my I had to vent. <laughs> my biggest pet peeve is I still at my local pet store still puts a sign out on weekends yeah. anesthesia free dental cleaning. And that's not that's not the real thing. <sighs> No, no, because, you know, you're only cleaning the outer surface of the tooth. So you're not getting where that disease lies. And in dogs, it's under the gum line. Rarely do dogs and cats. Cats get a kind of cavity, but dogs really don't get cavities like we do. So we're not going to, you know, see holes in the teeth. It's actually going on underneath the gum line. And yeah, any of those cosmetic awake dental cleanings are just wasting your money and giving you a sense that you're doing something when you're really not. Before we get out of here, I want to remind you that if you have a Yorkshire Terrier, a Shih Tzu, a Pug, or a Mini Schnauzer, check out Dr. Debbie's books, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend. They are Kindle books, which means you can get them over at Amazon.com. And, of course, we have links from AnimalRadio.pet. We have links from everything you've heard on today's show over at AnimalRadio.pet. And we'll catch you next week for more Animal Radio right here on this fine station. Have a good one. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Talk to you next week. This is Animal Animal Radio Radio. Network. Network.